Good morning, Pharma Excipients community. Today, we have our two guests from Fuji Chemical again, Mark Blankert, Technical Director, and Pavesh Patel, Technical Service Manager. Our topic today is solubility enhancement in solid oral dosage forms. So if you're looking for a solution to solubilize your oral solid dosage form, watch this interview. And as always, do not hesitate to contact us if you have more questions or need a sample. Bavesh Mark, thank you for being here with me again. Now, let us directly start with my first question. I understand Fuji Chemicals has some great solutions for solubility enhancement in solid oral dosage forms. Why is solubility such an important issue in pharmaceuticals? Well, Tom, with oral solid dosage forms, we obviously swallow a drug. And for it to have an effect on the body, it has to actually get to the side of action. The first step in this process is to be in a soluble form. We then transverse the GI tracts and safely diffuse to the relevant site. This is why issues such as permeability and first pass through the liver are also of importance. So solubility is clearly the first of these critical steps in order to achieve bioavailability and thus the activity of drug products. Is this issue common? Yes, Tom, it is a common issue. As you're aware that in particular, uh, the many drug has poor solubility issue. In particular, around 40 to 70% of new chemical entities suffer issues with the poor solubility. And thus, uh, the poor solubility will become a larger issue over a period of time. I've heard people refer to the biopharmaceutical classification system, BCS, when discussing solubility. What is it again? Yes, biopharmaceutics classification system deals with both solubility and permeability. It is very simple as higher and lower for each because it is a kind of metric system and gives a correlation between the four different areas. As Mark has already indicated that both solubility and permeability goes hand to hand. So for example, class two drug has good permeability, but poor solubility. Whereas class four drug has poor solubility and permeability. Therefore, Fuji solution allows you uh, to address both and it really focus on poor solubility from class two and class four drug. Okay, and uh, so how is solubility normally addressed? Traditional approaches to solve poor solubility uh, were to increase the surface area, things like grinding uh, up to create a higher surface area, and that leads to a faster dissolution rate, or approaches such as changing the form to something that's more soluble, and, and, and hence the prevalence of such approaches as, as co-crystals, uh, salts, prodrugs, and the use of the amorphous phase. Can you explain the approach for which you use to solve solubility enhancement? Yes, sure. The ultimate aim is to achieve a high surface area amorphous material. The internal high porosity of the fusi excipient is perfect scaffolding confinement for the creation of a high surface area amorphous state. And by that can be created by achievement of the surface chemistry. But in order to take a larger crystal and put them into a highly porous material with very small, tiny pores, we need to unsettle the crystal and reform the amorphous phase. And this required that we are going through a liquid stage. The ways this can be achieved is typically either to use a solvent by dissolving into a drug into some common solvent or by melting approach to melt the product into the pores. And most of such process can be done with different technologies such as spray drying and hot melt exfusion. Can you give an example for that? Okay, as, as Bavesh mentioned, uh, these large crystals need to go into a, a small pores in, in our porous carriers. And one of the easiest way to do this is to dissolve it in a solvent. So one of the typical examples I would use is the uh, class 2B BCS drug uh, phenofibrate. Uh, there's a nice publication on it and hence I, and I hence use that and people can ask for uh, which publications we can put that in, uh, in, in below. So in this case, we used uh, methanol as a solvent for the, uh, for the active. And then we, we, just like we would with a, an oily uh, material, we can just get that liquid and it'll uh, be pulled into the pores from uh, capillary forces. Once it's inside the pores, we then just need to dry the system. So maybe use a vacuum and, and the methanol can come off, which was used in this publication. So when that occurs, due to the confinement effects and the effects of surface chemistry, instead of forming a crystalline phase, 
we form the amorphous phase. And because it coats these very high surface areas, we get the combination of the high surface area and the more soluble amorphous phase. And that's what we're really after. So in this paper, that's what they got. We had a nice stable bioavailable uh, increase in solubility. And the approach of doing this, which was in a um, uh, fluidized bed, resulted using fairly standardized equipment, leads to homogeneous loading, and uh, there's no heating of the API. So we can use that with uh, temperature sensitive APIs. Can you give an example where solvents aren't required? I think about the hot melt extrusion method. Yes, the melting approach is quite simple and we just need to convert a crystalline drug into a low viscous molten state so it can easily enter into the pores. We can do such things by heating the drug above the melting temperature. This can be done in different ways and what are the most elegant approach is to use a hot melt extrusion process. The advantage of this approach is that we don't require the solvent. So it's completely solvent free process. And hot melt extrusion is typically used with the polymer, hydrophilic polymer. But of course, in this case, we are talking about the use of inorganic porous excipient like mucilin. So let me highlight some of the advantages for using inorganic porous excipient in hot melt extrusion. One of the advantages is that the entire process where you consider the downstreaming part is not required with inorganic porous excipient, especially like cooling, cutting, and milling of the extrudes. Second advantage, uh, you can perform cleaning at very lower period of time. So you can reduce significantly the cleaning time compared to the hydrophilic polymer and you can increase the production output. And the, another most important advantage is that uh, inorganic porous excipient has moisture adsorption property. So the stability of amorphous state of API can be improved by minimization of drug from amorphous to the crystalline form during the long-term storage. You just didn't refer to spray drying. I thought this was a key area for Fuji and one that could be used for solubility enhancement. Yes, it is, Tom. Uh, spray drying is another amorphous solid dispersion approach for the solubility enhancement. This, however, requires a relatively specialized equipment. And if people are interested, and if they don't have that capability for the commercial scale spray dry, then they can approach to Fuji. And we are doing the contract manufacturing business for uh, solubility enhancement via spray drying process. So we covered a lot of ground here. Can you briefly summarize and discuss the benefits of the Fuji approach? Sure. So we're, we're talking about oral solid dosage forms and the need for drugs to become bioavailable. And this requires the solubility uh, for crystalline drugs. And if there's poor solubility, we need solutions. The approach that we're talking about is a combination of high surface area on one hand and a more soluble amorphous phase on the other. This is achieved by uh, solidifying our drug from some sort of liquid into a porous carrier and coating the very high surface area of that carrier. The drug confinement and the proximity to the, uh, to the substrate results in a stable high surface area amorphous phase and hence an increase or an improvement to our bioavailability. Fuji excipients are ideal. Why are they ideal? Because they have a high porosity, allowing us to put more drug into the system. They have the correct pore size distribution, and that's both in, in terms of loading and unloading, uh, and in the stability of that amorphous phase and the high surface area of that amorphous phase. And, and one of the things that actually I didn't uh, uh, mention earlier is that Fuji has a number of different surface chemistries that can be used. So different excipients and those different chemistries can lead to improvements in the chemical stability, the loading and the release. And finally, the, the benefits of Fuji as an excipient itself allows for improvements in processability, manufacturability, and finally, tabletability. So as you see, we cover all aspects to use this approach to improve your solubility of your drugs. Thank you. Thanks a lot for the answer, Mark. Thanks for this great interview, both of you two. I learned a lot of solutions for solubility enhancement today, and I hope our users too. Bavesh, Mark, thanks again very much for your time. Thanks, Thank you. Tom. That's appreciated. Thank you.
Thank you very much. You're welcome. Have a good day, both of you, and I hope we'll see us again. Bye-bye.